Coming up on today's show, we have a chat with multimedia artist Dale Hardy. Local dance artist Cora J. Williams gives us a stunning improvised performance. And we also have a chat with up-and-coming artist Lauren Young. And we take a look at some more alternative fashion. But coming up first on the show, our host Carolyn sits down with multimedia artist Dale Hardy to discuss his creative process and his journey. I, I try and be my own customer. Yeah. If I don't like it, I paint over it. A hundred percent. And that is actually quite a nice way of thinking. If you don't like something, you can always paint over it and you can bring that not just now, but ev- every day Absolute, <laughs> of life. Absolutely. Because if, if I don't like it, why would I expect anyone else to A, like it, or B, mm. want to spend their hard-earned disposable income on it? Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that's so, so true. So I have to be the first port of call. Yeah, you know? definitely. And like, is that, how, how actually did you realise that you liked art? Like, what, like, have you always liked it or is it something that clicked one day? I've always been creative. I was a mm-hmm. chef for a long time. Oh. Um, and that, that was, actually, I, I studied photography at Gateshead College mm. in about 2002, 2003, with a view to being a photographer. And for, for whatever reason, it, it, it sort of, I didn't pursue that career. Mm-hmm. Um, but since then, I've always been taking photographs. I've always liked art, mm-hmm. but just casual. I'd never even really considered doing it as a career. And then I was a chef and that my creative output was directed to food because I love food. I'm, I'm, I, love, I love to create something from nothing. Mm-hmm. So the ing- get the ingredients and, and make something nice. And it's the greatest expression of love, I think, yeah. to create something from scratch for somebody that you love or like yeah. and have them eat it. Yeah. And, and I guess that's, that, that process is sort of transposed into my art. Mm-hmm. And then I've, I was looking for something. Uh, the, the truth is I was looking for something to do with my time. And I contacted the Northern Centre of Photography. Mm-hmm. And the guy who was running the programme, interv- he, he said, come down for a chat. And that turned into a three hour interview and he showed me around the, the whole program and he sold me. Mm-hmm. I, w- I was in after that three hours. So I made the application and then I started the course. And then from that, from starting the course, I've just taken, just taken my creativity wherever it's gone, yeah. whether that's photography or video. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just, I've, I don't consider that I really have any rules, mm-hmm. that there, there are ways to do things, but just because there's a precedent set of how to do it, there's no reason that should be followed. So, and that's, I was doing, doing my photography in the video and then I wasn't actually creating anything physical. Mm-hmm. And then lockdown, the first lockdown happened and I decided, well, that, well actually it was the end of, end of my first term okay. and I bought some paper and I thought I'd paint because I wasn't producing anything physical. It was just stuff online via Instagram. And I wasn't really happy with that. It was just just digital output. So, so I started painting on paper and then started buying canvases. And then I just do whatever I want. Brilliant. There's no reason not to. Yeah. And as I say, if, if I like it, I'll keep it. If I don't like it, mm-hmm. I'll paint over it. Yeah. Um, and I... I I take inspiration from um, just whoever I come across. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a painter. I think the worst thing I could probably ever do is to take any formal training in painting. It's sheer expression. Yeah. And I express however I'm feeling onto a canvas mm-hmm. or via my camera mm-hmm. um, and see how it goes. Yeah. And if, it, if it, what comes out I like, I like it. If what comes out I don't like it, I'll do something else with it. Yeah. And quite often my paintings have gone on a real journey. Mm-hmm. They've got multiple layers of paint mm-hmm. that I've, I've adapted, I've painted over, I've added something and, and it's a journey. It's like life, life yeah. is a journey. Mm-hmm. And like, it's really interesting because from my point of view, I, I'm not necessarily an arty person. Like I don't know much about art or artists or things like that. Like for example, if I went in the Baltic, I could look at something and I could create my own story, but I wouldn't necessarily know what the artist reason was behind creating it. Yep. Um, and my enjoyment comes from 
making my own decisions and making my own reasons of behind that piece of art and what it means to me. Yes. Is that something as an artist that is important for the viewer um, to do when they look at your stuff? Or is it more like you want them to see the reason behind what you've created? Or is it just down to whatever, they, whatever comes into their head while viewing it? With my paintings, it's probably, I've come to term it, it's not about what I offer you. Mm -hmm. It's not about what I show you, it's about what you take away. Yeah. So I can't really articulate and explain what made what, how I was thinking or how I was feeling when I produced a p particular painting mm -hmm. because that's in words that's almost impossible mm -hmm. and how I was feeling and how I was thinking and the experiences that I'd been having around that time is what's on the canvas. Right. So what I see I, I can interpret that to myself mm -hmm. but you might see something completely different and that's the point for me mm -hmm. it's that what does it what does it say to you if it says to you i hate that i don't want to look at it again at least it says something yeah and if it says i think that's aesthetically pleasing or those shapes make me feel a particular way and that color does something that's that's what i want from it and you can check out all of dale's work at dalehardymultimedia.com but coming up next in the show, we have local dance artist Cora J. Williams performing a stunning improvised piece with music from our very own Sam Palmer, aka Ill Advised. Massive thank you to Cora. I'm sure we'll be catching up with her very soon. 
But coming up next on the show, Carolyn sits down with another up-and-coming artist local to the region, Lauren Young. I think not only have you got, obviously, what is a flourishing business already, and it's building, yeah. and it's growing, and it's getting bigger, but you, with that also comes like loads of experience, so you're learning as you go, and you're learning yeah. what you like, what you don't like, and already you're in a position where you know, you've got so much commissioned work coming in that you might have to turn people down. And even with that, nobody likes turning people down, but it's again, it's a learning experience yeah. of how to deal with, deal with people too. Definitely. Um, so that is, it's all so, so exciting. So can you tell us a little bit about um, the work that you actually create? So I know that you've talked about a few different branches of yeah. your business. Um, can you tell us about like the three different yeah. branches? Yeah, so like, well, I suppose we start like with my actual paintings. Yeah. Right? Like, um, so I'm very lucky that like where I live is like right on the edge of the Northumberland countryside. So like, oh. um, I'm like right on the county Durham Northumberland border. So there's like it's just lush and um, like ride some lovely horses and I get to see all of like places that people don't normally see in yeah. like nature and things. So like I do take a lot of inspiration from that. Mm-hmm. Um, so like a lot of my like homeware or my originals and prints that I sell are like inspired by what I see when I'm okay. out and like people sometimes might look at it and think oh that doesn't make sense but sometimes it's just the vibrancy of the colours or like or how it makes me feel like that, that might come out on a page so it might not yeah. necessarily just be the painting of something I've seen but the influences from that. Yeah. Um, so I have like prints and stuff like that and then um, I've got greetings cards that are um, like birthday cards, Christmas cards. Yeah. Um, I've just got like my designs. <laughs> yeah, how to describe design. them. No, that's like, amazing. I, I don't know. I, I'd say like I use colour, like it's quite vibrant and like, but yeah. you can still tell it's watercolour and yeah. um, traditional. Um, and then my homeware is a bit of like, it incorporates my watercolour paintings, but then like I, add pattern and stuff into the background so that's like digital and um and the same with my greetings card like none none of the text on anything is like a font it's all my lettering oh, which I do you. like on my ipad and draw it and yeah so it's all really individual it's, yeah and then so then that kind of links into the wedding stationery so when i do wedding stationery for people at the moment i don't have like a house collection or anything it's just bespoke stationery that i do so everything I paint every single element individually on a sheet and then lay it all out on the computer how they want it so yeah. like no one else will ever have the same thing or sometimes I illustrate the do a painting of the venue that they're going to have it in and put it on the invitation or um but then all the lettering on that again mm-hmm. is my lettering so no one's ever going to have the same thing and like no yeah. one's going to have seen anything similar because it's all so different yeah um and then um yeah, so then like commission stuff. So I do like a lot of pet portraits and landscape commissions. Brilliant. And then like commercially wise, sometimes I go and paint shop windows or shop That's walls so with nice. like their logos on or design. So really I'm just doing a bit of everything, but yeah. like it's definitely all stylized. Like when you see my work, like it's definitely. all got a style. And well, it sounds like you can very much adapt to yeah. like anything and I think it's about what people want at the time and what they're looking for and it sounds like you've got the perfect balance of individuality but also adapting to, yeah. to what's kind of the thing at the time and what people are looking for which is which is perfect and that's yeah. the perfect mix for a successful business um, and I think there's probably a lot of people out there, a lot of young people that are thinking, okay, I really like creating pieces um, yeah. and I love art and I love doing this, I love doing that. Um, but they wouldn't necessarily have the confidence to call themselves an artist or have the confidence to then go on and try to create stuff for people to buy. What was it that made you realise, actually, I am really good at what I do and people will buy into it. What was it that gave you that confidence in yourself? So like I said earlier, it was literally um, like our family friend, Kathy, like she had this shop and I was just going along for a bit of experience and yeah. it was just little nudges and um, my lecturers at uni, yeah. like being like, oh, you should do this or you should enter this competition. And, yeah. And like I, 
I think like anyone going, I don't know, going in A-levels or going into uni or doesn't, well, not even education, but just like, like someone trying to get into it. I think you, they've yeah. just got to believe in themselves and I don't yeah. know, like things like Etsy are really good places to start because like you can put a print on there and, and someone might see it and that might just give you that little push and yeah. like, although it sounds like I'm doing really well now, it took me a long time to get where I am and a lot yeah. of, I don't know, it, it did take us a while to build up my confidence and yeah. it wasn't really till I was in my final year mm -hmm. um, of my degree that I started thinking, oh, I do want to sell my designs or this is what I want to do with it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know, just surround yourself with people that will support you, I suppose, and then you can Definitely. have the confidence to go. And you can check out all of Lauren's work on social media at Lauren Young Illustration. Finally on the show, we have some alternative fashion by Canny Bonnie, presented in association with Delightful Tack. Uh, I'm Susan, my company is called Canny Bonnie. So I sell uh, so stuff that I make, so like customised top hats and headdresses, things like that. And then I also um, at the moment I'm making a range of like old like vintage sports jackets and then sewing loads of like mad fear on them and stuff like that. And then I also sell knitwear that I get made in Nepal, so that's like a really lovely family that I work with. Uh, and so like dungarees and cotton things that I get made in push going in here and again that's a family that I've worked with for years. You can either buy it on Etsy, so that's Canny Bonnie uh, or Canny Bonnie Boudoir on Etsy, and then also from my website, so that's www.cannybonnie.co.uk. Next time on Sessions from the Pit.